welcome back let us start lecture 10 so we were discussing uh, symmetry point groups and in that discussion we have already covered single axis uh, rotation point groups and uh, no rotation point groups right so now let us uh, look at next in the category is dihedral point groups so what are dihedral point groups So basically dihedral point groups are carrying more than one axis of rotations. So carrying more than one axis of rotation. So you can immediately think of many examples that we have already discussed. So let us uh, look at it one by one. So the first category is uh, within dihedral point groups. The first category is uh, DN. So typical elements will be A, C, N, N, C2, which are uh, perpendicular to C, N. Okay. So let me use the other bracket. Yeah. Okay. So E C N where C N is the principal axis and N C two is which are perpendicular to the principal axis. So the example is let me show you. So this is cobalt atoms, which is the central atom here, and then we have triethylene diamine which are arranged something like this so let me see nh2 nh2 so it is clear that uh, three nh2s are coming out of the plane of the board and three of them are going back to the plane right where cobalt is sitting in the plane of the board and then these are connected with diethylene group okay so you have this and you have this so you can easily see that the central cobalt atom actually has the octahedral geometry but because of uh, this diethylene group this actually is does not belong to octahedral point group but uh, dn point group right so you can see that where is uh, your c3 axis there is a c3 axis which is going uh, like this so which is uh, going through the plane of the board perpendicular to the plane of the board and which will be rotating these nh2 groups one two three and then four five six and then there will be three c2s which are perpendicular to this c3 so that means there will be a so can anyone tell so you can think of maybe so you will have one c2 which will be so this is now in the plane of the board so if i do this rotation this nh2 will come to this place and this nh2 will go to this place right so similarly you have another c2 like this and third c2 will be like this right right so that's one example then we have another example which is called as ferrocene so ferrocene is a molecule with two five member rings with an aromatic character and then a central metal which is iron and now the second ring is not exactly eclipsed or staggered with this one but there is a slight angle to it I'll just draw it like this and then there is uh, coordinate bonds like this so I understand that it is not clear so uh, because it's a 2d plane so I request you to go to chem tube 3d dot com and uh, under symmetry tab 
find this molecule under dn point group or d5 point group so maybe other way of drawing this molecule will be let me show you so is something like this and then let me draw the other ring as in color red so there is a slight angle to it i hope you can all see that now and then uh, so red is behind the plane of the board and blue is in front of the plane of the board and in the center iron is sitting which is in the plane of the board okay so this is your iron so now if you see that there is uh, where is your axis so so c5 axis is passing right through perpendicular to the plane of the board so you can draw it like this and then you have five c2s which are perpendicular to this so five c2s will be bisecting through this okay one similarly you will have another c2 bisecting through this so you can see that the one carbon atom is slightly to the right the one which is behind and the uh, the one which is in front is slightly to the left similarly here so you have one carbon atom slightly to the left another to the right and c2 is passing right through between and similarly here so you have five vertices so five such c2s so it basically it has uh, c5 five c2s which are perpendicular and e right so this example uh, it can be very well understood now and if you cannot visualize it in 3D here, so I request you to go to chemtube3d.com and try to visualize the molecule there. Both the molecules are listed in that website and it will be easier for you to understand if you uh, log in. So this is uh, one of the dihedral point groups. Now let's uh, look at the second dihedral point group, which is DNH. So as the name suggests, so it will have E, C, N, again 5 C2s which are perpendicular to C, N and in addition to that there will be a sigma H, right? So in the previous case there was no H, so H is uh, denoted as D and H here. Now we have already seen these, uh, this example one of the example is bf3 so we know that there is a there is e we should be able to locate c3 so i will not spend time on that and then we have three c2s and we have sigma h right so that is very very clear sigma h is the molecular plane in the plane of the board c3 is the perpendicular to the plane of the board and then c2s will be passing through three bf bonds so that should be very very easy then we also have a scene or we have not seen but let's see eclipsed ethane we have seen the case of staggered ethane when we were discussing s6 axis right so in this case let me draw the one with a slight angle but there is actually no angle to it it's right behind it's unlike twisted ferrocene twisted ferrocene had a small angle but this one is the dotted line is right behind the solid line okay so you have h h you know how eclipsed ethane would look like right okay so now here so this thing would also have e c3 3 C2s and Sigma H. Now here the C3 would be passing through CC bond, right? This one will be your C3. Then 3 C2s uh, will be bisecting the CC bond and will lie somewhere in between the two hydrogens. So it's like it is not passing through CH bond. It's actually bisecting the cc bond okay so it's in the plane of the board while three hydrogens and this 
carbon is actually in front of the plane of the board and the, the other methyl group is in the back of the plane of the board, right? While the three C2s will be in the plane of the board and sigma H is also in the plane of the board which is bisecting the CC bond, right? Okay. And then in addition, it will have some other planes. So, but these are the minimum uh, criteria for having B in H, right? So, for example, this one also has sigma Vs or sigma Ds. So, this one will also have sigma V or sigma D, but let's not uh, worry about that. These, this is the necessary and sufficient condition for it to fall under D in H category. So, now let us see the next category in dihedral planes which is d and d so d and d has e c n n c 2s perpendicular to c n and n sigma d and in addition it also has s 2 n okay so sigma d contains CN and bisects 2C2 axis, right? That is as per the definition of sigma T. Now an example, we have already seen this example. We know staggered ethane, right? So I'll just quickly draw it. So we have already discussed this example, so we will not uh, cover this in detail. So it has E, C3, we know it has C3, it has three C2s, it has three Sigma Ds and a S6, right? We have seen how there is a S6 in this one that we have already seen. Okay, so let's move ahead and in the Next in the category is D infinity H. Okay, so the elements and the corresponding operations will be C infinity. This is actually very easy to identify infinity C2s, which are perpendicular to C infinity, and then we have sigma H, there is S infinity and there is i and uh, the typical characteristic of this molecule is that they are centrosymmetric linear molecules so linear molecules can either be non centrosymmetric or centrosymmetric there are only two options we have already seen c infinity v which is non centrosymmetric linear molecule. So, uh, this one is centrosymmetric linear molecule, and a typical example is C double bond o, CO2. Okay. So, the center of symmetry lies at the carbon, and then you have two oxygens at the end. So, you can easily see where is your C infinity axis. C infinity axis is passing right through the OCO bond. Then you have infinities C2s perpendicular to this. So, axis perpendicular to this, so you'll have one axis, another axis, another axis, right? So, there'll be infinity such axis passing through perpendicular to OCO bond and so on. Each of this will be a C2 axis. And sigma H, there is one sigma H which is perpendicular to the plane of the board and cutting right like this then you have s infinity and i which is also very easy to see s infinity will be this axis collinear with c infinity s infinity i will be at the center so the molecule is very easy so centrosymmetric linear molecules will always be of d infinity h point group okay so that finishes uh, dihedral point group. Let us now look at uh, next category. Next category is very simple, but 
the examples are difficult to find in this group s to n group okay so within s to n let's uh, or it's actually called as not s to n it's called as s n point group s n okay so within s n let us see an example of s to n there is only one category s to n for e1 n basically this will have e c n and s to n symmetry element there are no other symmetry elements present uh, no sigmas so typical example it's actually a little tedious to draw let me see if i can draw it correctly now this particular bond is coming out of the plane of the board and so is this one every alternate bond is so it's something like a chair form of cyclohexane but this is cyclooctane and then you have two uh you know, four fluorine atoms attached to it which gives it asymmetry you can have any atom basically here so you can see now there is no sigma present to this because if you even if you try to draw a sigma cutting let's say this one you will not be able to reflect the opposite atoms here right okay so there is no sigma very clear there is e there is cn so in this case what will be your cn try to find out and then you will have a s2n so try to locate cn try to find out the order of cn and s2n in this case uh, let us take it as home assignment and if you have any difficulty come back to me so find out order of cn and s2n axis in this molecule okay i have one more example for uh, sn point group which is also a little difficult to draw let me see if i can draw it correctly So now the phenyl ring, there are four phenyl rings connected to it, but these are not in plane exactly. This one is something like half of the ring is coming out of the plane of the board and half of the ring is going back. So something like a propeller. Similarly, this one also. So here, in this case, I'll tell you what the order is, E, C2, S4. It is easy to identify. So this one is also S2 n point group or S4 point group basically. Okay. So this should be very, very clear. So we have covered a single axis, non-rotational, dihedral S2 n and uh, last in the category of point groups is called as cubic point groups so these point groups uh, these are a uh, little special special in the sense that they are formed by uh, something called as regular polyhedra the shape of these molecules is uh, can be represented by a regular polyhedra so let us first try to understand what is a regular polyhedra or polyhedron so what is a regular polyhedron so regular polyhedron has let me one of my figures yes so the faces are face 
so regular polyhedron is a closed figure is a closed figure the face of each uh, polyhedron or all the faces are equivalent vertices are equivalent when i say equivalent i mean that uh, they are equivalent when you operate them by symmetry operations so all the faces are equivalent all the vertices are equivalent and all the edges are equivalent so that means you can replace any edge by another edge by doing any kind of symmetry operation and they should be equivalent okay so how do you form regular polyhedrons let us see that so what it uh, takes to form regular polyhedron so for a polyhedron to form you need to start with a uh, equilateral triangle okay so let's say if we start with equilateral triangle how many equilateral triangles uh, do we join together at a given vertex so that it can form a, a non planar geometry so let's say if we have if we join two of them then it will form only a planar geometry so it has to be more than two right so more than two meaning uh, so this will not form a regular polyhedron however if we have three equilateral triangles connected so two are depicted on one on this side another on this let me draw it little bigger so that you can visualize it clearly so this is one this is second and the third one is at the back okay. so this is your uh, this is my one triangle one equilateral triangle then i have second equilateral triangle and third one is at the back right these are the three which are meeting at this particular vertex right and then the fourth one automatically goes at the bottom of this which will seal it and make it as a closed figure so what is the geometry of this this is basically a tetrahedral geometry or you can call it as tetrahedron right now uh, so we combined two equilateral triangle along the edge you cannot do it or at the vertex so you cannot make a closed figure if we combine three you can make a closed figure and this is a regular polyhedron now if you see all four faces it has four faces which are all equal how many edges are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 edges all six edges are equal all four vertices are equivalent right so that forms a regular polyhedron now let's say if we have uh, if we combine these equilateral triangle if we combine four equilateral triangles at a uh, vertex so that will give rise to a how do i draw it let's see now it will be easier to draw if i first draw a So you can see that now there are four faces on the top four equilateral triangles on the top and four equilateral triangles at the bottom so this forms a octahedron this also is a closed figure right so it has eight faces now similarly if we draw five so here at a given vertex at a given vertex four equilateral triangles are meeting so one is at the back one is at the front and then you have one at the side and one at the side right so you have four and similarly four at the bottom so at a given vertex at any given vertex there are four equilateral triangles which are meeting so now let's see if we can uh, 
go to five equilateral triangles and we can make a closed figure. So let's try to draw it. So, so far we are playing only with triangle. Then we'll have to go to the higher polyhedra. To see if we are drawing it correctly. Yes, anything which is at the back, I'll draw it with the dotted line so that it is not confusing. So if you notice at any given vertex, there are five faces which are meeting. One, two, three, and then you have four more. And this one will be meeting Let's draw this a little bigger. So imagination is the key here. Okay, so now if you see at each of this vertex, there are five equilateral triangles which are meeting. So let's try to count. So let's say if we are looking at this vertex, so you have one, two, and three sides, and then four and five, right? So pick up any vertex. So here also it is easy to see at this one. We have one, two, three, four, five, right? Similarly, here you have one, two, three, four, five. Right? Here, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So this particular figure is called as icosahedron. So here you have 20 equilateral triangles or 12, 20 faces forming. And this one is also a regular polyhedra. So it falls into the definition of regular polyhedra. So now let's also see. So uh, if we try to combine more than five equilateral triangles at a given vertex, you cannot form, you can try, you cannot form a regular polyhedra. It will not fit into a regular geometry. So these are the only possibilities which can be uh, formed by a triangle or equilateral triangle. Let's also look at uh, what can we do with a square. So if we have a square, so if we combine two squares, you cannot do it, right? If you combine three squares, you still cannot do it. So you have to, no, you can do it actually. With three squares, you can do it. But uh, how do you do it? So how do you do with the three squares you actually form a cube so here if you see at each vertex at each vertex there are three faces which are connecting at each given vertex there are three faces which are connecting so this also forms a regular polyhedra and this one is easy so you know that this is a cube and if you try to combine four uh, these things at a vertex then it will form a planar structure again right it will no longer form so this is also not a possibility so with square the only possibility is a cube with triangle there are three possibilities now let's go to a higher polyhedra even higher polyhedra so let's go to five sides a regular pentagon so now if you try to do it with a regular pentagon you end up forming a something called as dodecahedron how do you draw it so it's uh, it's actually easy if you see that uh, if you slice the vertices here 
I'll just try to do it for you. If you slice the vertices here, you will end up in a pentagon. So all these vertices, if you slice at equal lengths, you will end up pentagons joining each other. Let's try to draw it so that it is clear. Now try to draw five, all of them connected with each other. We have one, two, three, four. So this one is fifth. So drawing a drawing a three D figure on a two D is uh, sometimes a problem. So let's see. And then you have at the back. Each of this is connected. So now you see that at each uh, vertex, at a given vertex, there are three faces. One face, two face, and third face. At each given vertex, that there are three faces. So similarly here, if you see that one, two, three. You see it here there are one two three so there is an interesting relation actually if you slice this one at along the vertex you will end up in icosahedron right so this this thing is related to this thing with the slice operation it is not a symmetry operation this is just for understanding so this is related with the slice operation similarly if you cut cube along the uh, vertices you will end up in octahedron so this one is also connected with a slice operation. So that means these two will have same point group because you can fit octahedron inside a cube or you can fit cube inside an octahedron without actually worrying about the symmetry. Similarly, icosahedron can be fit into dodahedron and dodecahedron can be fit into icosahedron, right? So I'll try to draw it a little quickly and then we can stop for today. So let's see. Uh, if you have a cube you can see that how the six points at center of the six edges will actually form Uh, octahedral geometry right so it is very easy to see similarly within octahedral you can fit a cube so this uh, leads to a set of point groups called as cubic point group the name is uh, cubic but it has non-cubic uh, entities also so the point groups are we will see in more details uh, later on in next class but i'll just list down tetrahedral octahedral icosahedron and so on so we'll see a uh, little more details of it but i hope it is clear that how these uh, regular polyhedrons are formed so any molecular shape which is related to these shapes can be categorized into these point groups so why understanding these shapes are important because uh, these are very highly symmetric point groups and the number of operations are huge and it is difficult to list down all the operations at times but if you know that the molecular shape is closer to any of these shapes so you can immediately identify and then you can try to locate all the point groups right okay so uh, that's all for today so let's uh, continue in the next class with more details of what are the symmetry elements and operations for these point groups and uh, what are the other uh, categories within cubic point groups? Okay, thank you very much.